Morning, Daniel. The first successful interview demonstrates what you should do. The second, what you shouldn't, because I failed it. Amazon recruiter reached out to me looking to fill the position that recently got vacated. She asked me to send my updated CV for initial screening. So I sent her this without the intention of being hired. First of all, because I see much more potential in my current job. And secondly, their opening is not even my core qualification. They're looking to find a senior solutions architect. Yes, in the machine learning domain, but this is not a technical role. This is more a bridge between the customer needs and the execution, sort of technical pre-sales. I played along purely for educational purposes. After all, not every day you get invited by Amazon and this is overall an interesting experience. My CV got qualified and I got invited to the first round of interviews, what they call phone screening, but that's really an online meeting through China. I cannot show you the actual video of them asking me questions because you need a third party consent for that obviously, but I can explain the questions they ask and disclose my answers word for word. Walk me through your resume. And here I spent 8 minutes describing on a high level my current role and achievements and you have to make sure to tailor your story to the specific job requirements that they're looking for and don't make it too long. Remember that you have only 30 minutes for the call and the first 10 minutes are going to be just some small talk and the description of what they're looking for. So you only have 20 minutes to answer their questions and ask your own. Why is this the right time for you to transition and what is your motivation to join Amazon? A generic reply looking for new challenges is a great answer to this question but you have to make sure that it makes sense because if you started your current occupation three months ago obviously you're gonna to have to look for a different answer to this question what is your time availability for transition and this is going to be different for every particular candidate but what they're looking to hear is two weeks what are your salary expectations I didn't and never would have answered this question at the first round of interviews and the interviewer will try to frame it as we don't want to waste your time we just want to see that our budget aligns with your expectations don't fall for that and never give any figures at least at the first stage so here's what i said that makes a lot of sense and i've also been doing some research regarding the salaries of the potential yep. well uh, solution architect in different regions yep. and in this one as well and uh, i'm more or less well aligned with uh, with the salary range that is provided through all the resources i really would want to leave this you know figure discussion to the later stage of the interview process because working at amazon is not only about the money this was a very short interview and these were all the questions they had the last five minutes were devoted to my questions and i asked if everything goes well what is going to be the pipeline and the timeline so the first one is phone screening this one the next one is technical assessment typically with the hiring manager is going to be technical questions and behavioral questions then what they call a loop of five consecutive interviews with different people every one of them one hour long they call this whole process on-site but all of that happens virtually and all of that is going to be only behavioral and situational based questions and those five interviews will also include a homework assignment where they will send you some use case and you'll have to provide an assessment of that use case and how you would deal with it and then mail it back to them so phone screen technical interview five more discussions with different people and a homework the timeline for that is three weeks technical interview it was one hour and this is the one i failed but i recorded all the questions and my answers so we can learn from this first question tell me about yourself and i would have to say this is going to be the first question just about in any interview regardless of how many of their previous colleagues had heard this story in your previous rounds of interview asking this question the interviewer kind of breaks the ice and while listening to what you have to say they are trying to understand the kind of person you are and how well you've prepared for the interview so again high level walkthrough over the resume but through the prism of the job requirements and what they're looking for second question why do you want to work for amazon and notice how this goes in line with the first interview in the exact same order and don't just repeat what you said in the previous interview because there are 16 amazon leadership principles just pick a few which align with your personality and elaborate on those so in the first interview is going to be obsession with the customer and the second one is going to be something else here is when it becomes interesting domain specific questions tell me about a time where you didn't want to compromise on the great outcome when somebody else thought it was good enough and you didn't agree and i told the story from my experience to answer this exact question but the interviewer wanted to dig deeper and he asked me all these questions about all the little details like what was the timeline of 
of all the events, how the results were delivered, how the decisions were made, what was the single most important aspect of the work, what was my exact role in this project and what did I learn. He even challenged the whole idea of me doing that activity and asked me to prove him wrong. So don't make stories up because there might be a lot of specific details that they want to know. This was very detailed and we spent like 10 minutes discussing this one question. Can you tell me what happens when you type some address into the browser and hit enter? And I want to describe how the computer sends the request to the DNS, then receives an IP address, then goes to the server upon that IP address, then there might be dealing with firewalls on both sides. Then when the connection is established, the browser sends the request to the server for the specific page through the SSL. And finally, the server sends the HTML back to the browser, which it renders. It was more or less accepted, although I forgot about the load balancer, which he noticed and pointed out. Explain how Docker is used in machine learning. First of all, if you're applying within the machine learning domain and you don't know what Docker is, then you have to go and learn it. And once you do, the answer to this question is going to be easy because this is not a complicated technology. It's very cool, widespread, but it's simple. Docker is a computer inside a computer. It's an isolated container with its own environment, its own operating system and everything required for your program to run. It eliminates the need to configure the environment on every specific machine when you want to run this program. Based on Docker and Kubernetes, you can horizontally scale your application to the millions of users in the cloud. There were many more boring questions about how the containers are launched and how you can manage resources, but if you do it once, you'll have no problem describing this. There is a machine learning script that takes several hours to run. How would you make it faster? And give me all the different options you can think of. Reduce data size, reduce model complexity, try other models, code optimization, more vectorization, less for loops, use concurrency, reduce feature space through feature selection, and try out different hardware like GPU or the cloud. This was all that I came up with and he said okay and I'm not sure if it's good or bad so if you have any other ideas let me know. What are the pros and cons of model hyperparameter to me? As for pros, well the obvious thing that you create a more robust model that generalizes much better on the unseen data or alternatively you can make a smaller more lightweight and faster model if that is important to you through hyperparameter tuning and as for cons well first of all it takes time and secondly you may overfit your model to the training data if you don't have the correct validation strategy in place what is a feature store it's a database of machine learning features these are pre-computed data points that are stored someplace where you can retrieve them at request and in reach any machine learning pipeline. This is relatively new. What do you know about Hugging Face? A great French team that created the Transformers library that creates the API to the popular pre-trained machine learning models, mostly language-based. All of their models were made open source, which developed a great community and a loud name for themselves, and based on that, they provide professional services for their customers. Do you have experience with computer vision? I do, and here I described how I learned deep learning through the best courses out there, machine learning specialization with Andrew and Jeep, links below. Then I described how I coded up convolutional neural networks in pure NumPy just to understand the math behind it. And finally, how the modern workflow works, geared by Keras with TensorFlow or PyTorch backend with basically 20 lines of code. How would you build a machine learning pipeline? And this question I got completely wrong, or better said, on a different level of abstraction. I proceeded to describe what I would do with the data, read it, clean it, data pre-processing, feature engineering, training and validating the model, then packaging the inference engine, all these things. This was the last question and I gave a long story with detailed description of all the steps and he didn't stop me till the end. Instead, when I finished, he commented that, well, I expected something on a higher level with steps like data ingestion module, some ETL pipeline, data pre-processing and feature engineering, model training, model validation and evaluation of the best candidate, deployment of the best candidate, and model monitoring. Basically, he was looking for an ML ops pipeline and I provided the R&D workflow. And that was the end of the interview. To summarize, phone screening is easy. They just want to see if you're a sane and formally fit for the role. Technical interview has a modest difficulty, I would say 7 out of 10. And the key takeaway from my unsuccessful attempt is to clarify the question before rushing to answer. I didn't want to work there anyway and I got what I expected, but I hope you find this useful.